you may have noticed that this video is a little bit earlier than usual, and that is because we also have a real life hunting video from this past archer season coming out at the normal release time later on today. But I wanted to get back out here into Call of the Wild, and to be honest, I've been looking forward to this hunt since really even before Revan to the Coast came out. We knew that there were resets coming to all the maps, and as a lot of you guys probably know, I've been looking for a rare pheasant for a really long time, so I'm hoping maybe the reset that's something we can get done, and we're gonna run around and see if there's anything cool out here on our fresh rancho map. And perhaps starting off on a fairly positive note, our first pheasant, a 15 to 18 level 2, honestly for the weight estimate, that one has a pretty decent score, so pretty decent chance of being a golden it is at 17.7 and by the way this white brown plumage type that is the one that used to just be called common after they relabeled all the fur types there was one that got left over that wasn't given a new name from common that is the name for that so it's not some kind of new rare or anything like that and uh the other interesting thing since the changes to the tracks we can no longer just pick up a track and see the fur type of course now that is just unknown so that's going to make pheasant hunting a little bit more interesting at least Every single track is one that we want to go and check. No longer are just a 1 to 2 kg pheasant or even a 1 kg pheasant something we can just open the map and then ignore. It's going to be worth looking for really any. So as much as it would be nice to just be able to pick up a track and know that we have a rare pheasant on our hands, I think as far as the actual hunt goes, when everyone is an unknown until we find it, I do think it's going to make for a generally more interesting hunt. A lot of times with pheasants, at least for me, I end up picking the tracks up long before I actually spot them, and it's a bit of a downer to always know that we're going for a common, even before we actually get to see it, and at that point it's just hunting for respawns. So I'm hoping this is going to help overall with at least enjoying this. And I mean, who knows, there could be a rare out here right now, but also it wouldn't surprise me if we have quite a long way to go. I do have to say, so far, pheasants do not seem to be quite in the same areas. Certainly helps when they just decide to fly to us, but 15 scoring silver on that one. A little bit lower with that same white-brown plumage type. But the general experience I had when we were really starting to do a lot of pheasant hunting prior to the update was that up through here was pretty good, and of course we did just kill one there, and of course down here on this road. After running the road area, there really did not seem to be much but hen pheasants down there, and that is something we tend to see with resets. You'll get areas that only have males of certain species and other areas that only have females, and I kind of wonder if that's what's going on here. But it may actually be a good thing, so I don't want to go and shoot any hen pheasants yet, but it has been interesting to see all that's gone. That said, though, we may be on to a little bit of something here with this area. Got another pheasant, a molting level 2. I do wish they would take off a little bit better. That's one thing over on Reventuli. Definitely the birds flush from a, a much greater distance, sometimes too much to actually even be able to take them with a shotgun, but I do still kind of prefer that over sometimes kind of waiting around for them to fly off. But that I think is our third or fourth now, and second right here in the same area. And I would say only going up to 16, he's probably a little bit low, 14.5, but you know, I haven't even gotten to appreciate it, and maybe the molting just looks a little bit better. I quite like the look of the, the pheasants in the harvest screen. They always looked like they were lacking a little bit something, but I think that really, really helps to, to show the detail that goes into them. And naturally, kind of taken off before we could get to see what's in here. One of those looked a little bit light-colored to me, but if anything, it was a head, and I think really... It probably was the lighting, but just when I feel like we're kind of starting to get things figured out pheasant-wise, another one kind of up here in the center area, a lot of the white-brown plumage types, by the way, but I wanted to come down here and check this spot. Right in here was where we were getting a lot of our really big pheasants prior to the update, and I wanted to give that a look before we head off to other species, and I didn't want to make this a pheasant-only hunt, especially when the entire map got reset. I figure we should go around and look for some of the other animals, so it is right now about 10 o'clock, so we may jump around and look for Whitetail for a little bit. The thing I'm looking forward to most is actually looking for the Mule Deer later on, and maybe we can go and look for Bighorn and stuff like that at some point before we wrap up. 
I really did not expect to be running into Mule Deer this early on, but that's a pretty nice one. Not really sure where it's headed, but if we can get a shot in through there, and of course he's going to start trotting, we might as well go ahead and try to take him out. I can never remember, I really want a level 4 Diamond Mule Deer, and there is a particular rack that can make it, and maybe that one I'll have to get a closer look when we go up there. But you really don't get level 5s with that rack, and it's one of those things where it can add variety to the Trophy Lodge, so we'll go and see if that guy perhaps could have had a chance, and I hope that shot wasn't too far back. The 7mm is a pretty good weapon for just kind of intuitive lead and bullet drops, so I'm gonna guess we were okay since he started to go down in health fairly quickly. And indeed, blood looks pretty good, so he should not be too far up here. Actually, he is laying right over there, so maybe went 40 meters, something like that. But I think there's a sticker that we're looking for on his tine, and I don't... Oh no, actually, I do see one here, so maybe he'll be pretty decent. He's a 278. There's a couple of racks that are fairly similar, and I can't remember if it's the one with two stickers or one, but something kind of like this, but obviously a bit bigger, is what we're after. That was left lung and stomach, though, so just barely got the back end of that lung to end up being a vital hit. So lucked out in that instance, but nice to get a bonus mule here. I really don't know why they were walking along by the water here, but we'll take that, no questions asked. Well, this is certainly not what I expected to run into going after Whitetail. A piebald Whitetail doe, and I really, we're past Whitetail drink time. I really struggled to find any kind of decent Whitetail. There were a couple of small bucks in different areas, but it was not nearly as good as it used to be, and that's what I've heard from others who have hunted this map, but pretty cool to at least get a rare, but uh, it is, at the moment, 12.09 in-game, so we've pretty well missed Whitetail drink time, and maybe we'll encounter more like this. To be honest, this is kind of what I was hoping to do with the pheasants, as we're looking for other things, maybe run into some other pheasants as we go along. Pretty cool again, though, to get to see this in the harvest screen we've had. I think an albino whitetail doe over on Reventuli, but the piebald looks quite good in there. And I suppose we'll tax that just to have it, but lung, liver, and stomach, again, kind of like the mule deer, further back than I wanted to be. But I think I'll have to check on mule deer drink time. It used to be 1400 to 1700, assuming that it is still the same. We should have an opportunity to go after them soon. For now, though, we may go and run down the road down here in the south just to see if we can run into anything that is in a feed or rest zone at the moment. And that's not a bad find down here. A mythical bobcat looked to be one of the lighter variations. I'm actually not even sure. Maybe tan? And this was the area the day after we got our Great One Red Deer where we encountered the Melanistic bobcat in multiplayer. So interesting to see they're definitely still in the same spot. It does feel like, and of course with population redistributions, it's to be expected. A lot of things are in different areas, maybe where you wouldn't expect running into things, and sometimes of course where we would have found them in the past, but Bobcat, since getting spread out initially, seemed to still have that same thing going on out here on Rancho, and nice to get a little mythical, maybe that will respawn as something else. That does appear to be the tan fur type, and a 26.7 for him, and if I can point it out one last time, any of these species I haven't seen yet in the harvest screen, all of them look so good in that improved screen, but it is getting close to Mule Deer drink time now, it's about 1351. We have some distance to run here still. Actually, definitely want to take our time, that is. So you don't see a lot of these, it's probably a max weight female bighorn, so there's a max weight for the females of course and a max weight for the males. You really don't get them level 3 and the curled horns unless they are a max weight. Now, I actually don't know if that's realistic. I'd be interested to know if female bighorn can get like the curl in the horns if they get old enough or have the, the right genetics. It is always cool to see, and actually if they ever did, a multi-mount that includes a female bighorn, by the way, pretty nice jackrabbit came running out of there. But that would be a cool thing to get to add in there. I would say they're not so rare that I'd want to tax that in case it ever happens. But they are rare enough that it could take quite some time to actually get one. If we could get that rabbit, that would be nice. There we go. Just before he was ready to take off. But yeah, if anybody does know 
if female bighorn can actually get the the curl in the horns that would be interesting to know you know what else though that's not max weight i think max weight is 100 kg or maybe it is 105 from the estimate maybe a particularly high uh, trophy rating for the weight 123.4 not actually that incredibly far off from being a gold i don't think i've ever seen a gold female bighorn posted but I don't know if you got a, a little Truac influence there to where maybe the tip to tip spread or something was larger. Maybe that's possible. And actually for our Jackrabbit, about as low a score and weight as you can get for the max weight estimate. But that brown fur type looks pretty good in the harvest screen. Actually, lung shot after missing the first couple of shots. And now I think even though we saw a mule deer better there, we'll probably start to go and check some of those spots. One of my favorite areas, at least prior to the update, has become down in here. So if we just kind of start moving that way, maybe somewhat slowly to avoid spooking herds that are on their way over right now, that might be effective and maybe we can find something in the mountains as we cross over. Well, the good news is there definitely appear to be mule deer drinking down here, so their drink time must be about the same. I do find it interesting that one's nervous. I don't know where we spooked it from, but it definitely does not seem to be as crazy down here as it used to be. So, probably we're going to have to head off to some other spots and kind of see if we can find mule deer around there. And it's probably good. It seemed like there were so many mule deer crammed down into this area that maybe some of the other good spots were going to be lacking just naturally due to all the ones that were down in here. So, at least we got the one. And it looks like a long run around to go and get it. But at least something for our efforts coming down here. A 175.2 silver. And we'll just go and try some of the other lakes. I'm kind of curious if this one's going to have anything either. It's not that far a run. And there definitely was a pretty nice buck in here. Now again, we managed to spook it before we could get eyes on it. But that guy's probably right up there close to the score of the one that we shot earlier in the hunt. And I don't know... Actually, another pretty good one there. Now that's going to be like a 250-ish. This guy, I think, is a little bit higher scoring. So, with him broadside, and honestly, if we had a repeating rifle today, we could have gotten them both, but I did decide to go with the 7mm for a little bit of long-range capabilities. And again, as I mentioned, it just is very intuitive as far as the bullet drop and the lead you have to put on animals. So, we'll take our one, and hopefully I'm correct in saying that's going to be a little bit higher scoring than the other. He definitely didn't go anywhere. You can see the vital blood up there where we initially shot him. 273 for that guy, though. So definitely the higher scoring of the two. That other rack is always right around like 250, 255, something like that. I really wish there was a rack kind of like this for the different diamond variations. Maybe that'll happen one day, but not too bad for him, our biggest mule deer thus far. And I think we have a little bit of time left. It's starting to eat up a bunch of our time kind of running between the lakes. So we might jump around to a couple spots real quick. Now that's a pretty big look of mule deer, 237 to 298. Definitely a pretty uneven one, but yet again, able to find a pretty nice mule deer buck out here compared to our whitetail hunting. The mule deer is going a whole lot better, and again, the whitetail have been spread out a lot better on Rancho. For a long time, it was basically this lake a bit, but really this lake and these two larger lakes up here that held the majority of the whitetail on this map. So it's probably no surprise that with them being more spread out across the map, it's a little bit tougher to find really good ones just because you get so used to checking certain areas. But the mule deer, on the other hand, there have been pretty nice ones now at a couple of spots here. But we'll see here, maybe going from one best of the hunt right to the other. Uneven racks always can do some weird things with scoring, but 294 for that guy. Is that a diamond rack on that side? I don't think it is with it being that tall, but I can't think of a, an even like level 4 rack that would be. Not my favorite looking deer with way more mass on one side than the other, but definitely our highest scoring. And again, with the blonde fur type here. And I figured to wrap up here, we'd go to an area that was once by far the best mule deer lake on the entire map. And that's up here in the far northeast corner. Now, at the moment, I'm only seeing these three bucks. There may be more over there a little bit farther. And at this point, we might as well go ahead and take the shot on that guy. For one, in case there aren't any other mule deer there, so we at least get something for coming up here. But also because if they are there, they're over there a little over 200 meters to where they wouldn't hear the shot. But 
I don't see any sign of any over there, so maybe, and much like the Whitetail, maybe they've been kind of spread out to other areas, and that is kind of what we saw down south. And with the chance to scan around here without all the trees in the way, that kind of does look to be the case, so I'm glad we went ahead and took the one while we had the chance. And that probably is going to be the last kill of this video, so as far as the pheasants go, kind of like the last time that there was a redistribution, it's probably going to take some time to kind of dial in on where they are and where the best places to hunt them would be. But I think in general, we saw a lot of deer species today, the bighorn. It seems like Rancho is going to be a lot of fun to hunt, as it really always has been. And I'm looking forward to getting back out here to look for pheasants and some of the deer as well next time we get the opportunity. So on that note, that is going to do it for this video. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.